Welcome to Revolution Against Evolution. I'm your host, Doug Sharp. Co-host Rich Gear here as well, and uh, we're doing a little travel log today, eh, Doug? Yeah, we did some traveling this uh, this year, haven't we? We, we, we went have, to, yes, we have. Uh, in November, uh, you and me and Sue and, uh, and Matt went out to uh, explore some canyon country, and uh, we ended up at the Grand Canyon at first. And then to, uh, we went to saw to see the dinosaur footprints. Yeah, and at, uh, at um, the, the Tuba City. The yeah. Tuba City, yep, yep. And then we also uh, went to Bryce Canyon and uh, Zion National Park, and then and then went uh, went back home from there. Yeah, yeah three, I gotta tell you, they're, they're three of my favorite parks to visit. You know, I love the canyon, uh, but Bryce is probably my favorite. Although Zion, they all three of them have wonderful things about them, that and they and they're wonderful. But it's the geology we're going to talk about today a little bit, Doug. Right. Zion, uh, we're going to please. talk about the Grand Staircase. Yep. And uh, the Grand Staircase is actually uh, successive layers of rock that are exposed in in this Colorado Plateau, and uh, it uh, goes from uh, the top layer, which is supposedly the youngest layer. Although we'll talk about some of the we'll talk about that, yep, yep. And uh, then uh, all the way down to the bottom layers, which is uh, at the bottom of the Grand Canyon, which is uh, the uh, what they call the pre-Cambrian. Pre-Cambrian, yep, yep. And so uh, I would like to put this in the perspective of flood geology, of uh, of a rapid uh, deposition of water, okay, and uh, and talk about how that all fits into a biblical uh, time frame. And so I uh, wanted to start with uh, what is considered to be the top layer is uh, uh, Cedar Breaks National Monument. And uh, that is uh, sort of like the Miocene or Oligocene. Uh, Oligocene, yeah. Those, yep. those layers are um, up on the top layer. And it, it's actually a recent volcano is what it is. Oh yeah, okay. Because those two, two rock strata, those are like um, the, the the mammalian phase of right, of, yeah. of quote evolution of long time scales. Yeah, not the dinosaur time. All right. Now we want to sort of put things into context uh, in terms of what the rock layers actually represent, because what you uh, what they used to actually put these dates of millions of years on it. First of all, if they're sedimentary rock, we have to rule out, for the most part, uh, radioisotope dating. Correct. The way they do that is they, they'll, uh, they'll date like intrusions. Well, really what they do is they date, they date the rocks that are sediment, sedimentary mm -hmm. by usually by the fossils in it and what they've already predetermined them when the fossils lay down. But they try to calibrate it with certain igneous type rocks that are like intruded in some of these sedimentary rocks, mm -hmm. maybe and not in this particular area but in another area that has the same kind of fossils they've got an igneous rock in it perhaps or something because you can't date sedimentary rock by, by radio mm -hmm. radiometric dating it doesn't work and um so what we're really left with is a is a guessing by golly mm -hmm. or or a, a priori assumption is what we're left with so all right Doug, let's go on from there let's let's we're gonna uh, go i was watching a, a ian juby video just uh, yesterday oh he's great and yeah. uh, he was talking about how pat robertson was uh, uh talking with a lady who was concerned about uh, her son who was uh, uh, losing his faith because of of, uh, of evolution and Pat Robertson was talking well 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 you have uh, radiocarbon dating and you have dinosaurs and you have to just accept that the, this is what the science says and uh, and so he really gave a little fluffy uh, gloss over uh, I gotta tell you Pat the, Robertson the, yeah I used to really respect him a lot but he is really over many years has done said things I don't always lose his mind or whether he's mm -hmm. always believed in a lot he's been probably been a long ager anyway for well a long there's time. a lot of people who but, really stumble over this and this is what we're yeah. trying to do on revolution against evolution yeah, remove it's, obstacles I think remove obstacles mm -hmm. to faith into a biblical timeline really I guess because this is I, I, I was talking to somebody uh, and she was a really she's a really good gal but you know, she, she was thinking that the science and the Bible don't contradict each other, but and uh, which you and I agree with. But she was thinking in terms of, well, it's okay to have long ages and stuff. And I finally had to deal with the issue of death before Adam. Right. Okay. That's really the plan, the really big big picture when you're looking at. It. We're getting to the nitty gritty with some of the doing. We're dealing with. We're trying to deal with with a. It's like when you try to define 
what a day means, or you mm -hmm. try to define little geologic pieces. What the whole point of it is from a biblical worldview: how does death precede the first man and woman? Okay, all these other things are window dressing. And I think the window dressing works for the biblical timeline very, very well. Okay, and you so, have to take a look at what Jesus said about it. In, absolutely, in the scriptures. absolutely. So Jesus okay. uh, believed in the Noah flood. He believed in uh, it's because he uh, he was there. He had no yeah. <laughs> and he, so the uh, but uh, uh, you have to then uh, take what the evolutionists give us in terms of the rock strata, which they've done a, little, a lot of work in lot terms of, work, of, work, of, uh, of identifying these different layers, and there are indeed a lot of different layers, Right. and they have uh, uh, given them all names, which uh, <laughs> maybe are uh, helpful. It, uh, it helps to give a little credibility uh, to their long age, because if they got a, well, this is the Entrada Sandstone near Bryce Canyon. And so I would tell you, Doug, this is one of the, to me, one of the dirty, I love, I love the science and all that stuff. One of the dirty little secrets of science sometimes is they think they, they fool you into thinking they know what they're talking about by putting a name on something. Right. That doesn't explain what it is or why it is necessarily, mm -hmm. but it makes you feel better that mm -hmm. they put a name on it. It's not necessarily wrong to put a name on things like, mm -hmm. like the rock layers. In fact, I think that serves as some purpose even from a, from a biblical time frame. You say, okay, when we use, let's say, Oligocene, Miocene, Cretaceous, mm -hmm. uh, Silurian, or any of these, or Precambrian, we use these terms, we can figure out where generally they appear in, in, the, in, the, being, in the deposition, how they're being laid down. Although we know, as we've talked many times over Doug, they don't always appear in the order they're supposed to appear in. Right. And that, of course, causes a lot of problems, but not for flood geology. Really not for flood geology. It really doesn't. Yeah. And the, the thing of it is, is that you have uh, each layer, uh, you, you have uh, uh, all these different fossils in it, and there's only a certain number of different kinds of fossils that you can use to index. They call them index, index fossils. fossils. And they, these are extinct creatures that they identify with these particular uh, time periods. And so uh, if you find this creature over here, um, no matter where it is in the, uh, uh, in the height, yeah, yeah, it'll, yeah. It'll, it'll, this is, uh, uh, you know, this is a Cretaceous rock because it's got If you find a trilobite in the top of a mountain, well, that's back in the Cambrian explosion. Yeah, I think it must have got uplifted. Yeah, but somehow it got uplifted. Okay. But 95% uh, right. of all fossils are clams. Or of their or very If you go to yeah. the Coconino uh, you know, on, the, on the top layer of the Grand Canyon, and you look around uh, in the rocks, you'll find these clams. Okay. And so um, they're found throughout the fossil record, where, wherever it is. And so right. uh, then, the, then you have the other 5%. The ninety-five percent of that five percent are just fish. Are fish, yeah. And so uh, you have all this marine stuff, and if you have um, sedimentary rock, you would expect to find marine fossils. Fossils, mainly, especially if it was laid down by floodwaters. Right. Notice how many things, Doug. When I'm reading some of these things of the evolution, they're always talking about having something laid down. It was by a near inland sea, mm -hmm. or there was a flooded creek, or there was. <laughs> There was a, a run, a big, huge run, but always they're acknowledging in their own way, Doug, that most, this stuff was a, was laid down by water action. <laughs> and we've heard Ken Ham's little meme for years. You know, what do you expect if you have a flood? If you have flood geology, billions of dead things laid down rock layers by water action all over the earth. And what do you find? No, billions of dead things laid down by water action all over the earth. And that's really that's what you do. So we've always said this, and, and many of the creationists have said this. For those people for the first time we have the same fossils the same evidence mm -hmm. it's what what lens do you bring to it mm -hmm. what is your a priori assumptions of course we have a biblical worldview and, and an evolutionist as generally an atheistic worldview the real problem comes in doug when you have to kind of mix and match and what i'm trying to mix is a lot of long age long age trying to come trying to compromise with what's out and out in an evolutionary time frame. We, we know the reasons for uh, for the long time frames. It's because no one's ever seen evolution ever, actually ever occur in a, macro, right. in a macro sense. No one's ever seen something change from, from one thing, one kind of thing to another kind of thing. You never see a, right. a reptile turn into a mammal. So they figure you need a lot of time. And so the geology is what is really used as the foundation for all of that. 
No, I saw it in the in this thing I printed out the, yeah. the brochure for Cedar Breaks National Monument. It talks about this big lake that was up there. Exactly right. And that's and what I was reading. And laid, laid, laid all that stuff. Now, I wanted to uh, give you a breakdown of what this Scranton staircase yes, is. Yes, I want you to do, yeah, do that. Yeah. And uh, we're going to start with Cedar Breaks, which is the youngest, uh, and then Bryce Canyon. Uh, which is uh, uh, a beautiful park. It's oh. got all these uh, different hoodoos. Uh, <laughs> uh, it was like somebody, uh, some rancher said it was a heck of a place to lose a cow. Yeah. Uh, but, oh, uh, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a gorgeous place, yeah. And, and then, the, then you have the White Cliffs of Zion National Park. But then, the, and then there's the Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument. Yep. Uh, then below that is the Vermilion Cliffs. Then you have the Chocolate Cliffs of the North Rim. But right at this point, uh, there's a spot where the elevation is much lower, and this is between uh, uh, between the chocolate. I mean the Vermilion Cliffs, and then there's another set of cliffs that are on the other side of the Colorado River, and it forms a funnel you know, from where oh, yeah. the Lee's Ferry is. Uh, all the way th uh, to uh, where the, the, the Little Colorado River comes into the... Uh, it's into right the, here, right? Yeah, right there. Yep. And, and we'll show this. We'll sh yeah, you'll see that, yeah. And so uh, what's really fascinating to me is the shape of the, the canyon right at this point because uh, it's a lower elevation down there than it uh, cuts this canyon, this big canyon, right through this higher... It uh, goes about 3,000 feet up. Yeah. Uh, and when you go from desert view of the Grand Canyon all the way down to Cameron, you're following uh, you know, how, how uh, the backwards of what the Little Colorado River is doing. Yes, okay. And so at the Grand Canyon, where the Little Colorado River comes into it, it's really deep, the, the canyon is. But uh, at Cameron, it's it's shallow. It's Very shallow. just a kind of a wash. Yeah. And so, um, to explain this from an evolutionary point of view, you have to f figure that the, the water rushed up the side of the, uh, the yeah. mountain and it started cutting that way. And um, and and so I, I would uh, then propose a flood model for this. Okay. Is that the waters were actually much higher than all of that. All of it. All right. And but it started sloshing back and forth. And you can see some of the canyons, uh, side canyons of the Grand Canyon, actually point the wrong direction. Yeah, they do. And right. they, they point in the uh, towards the east rather than towards the west. And so I find that r rather interesting. Uh, then once you get to uh, uh, the actual north rim of the Grand Canyon, there's a sequence that uh, they always show in the at the Grand Canyon Always the, show the it, Geology yep. Center. And you have the, the Kaibab uh, on top, then the Toro Weep, the Coconino, mm -hmm. the Hermit Shale, the Supai sh Shale, the Redwall Limestone, and then uh, between the Redwall Limestone and the Muav, there's what they call an unconformity. Ah, uh, let's talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> the unconformity is where you're missing 200 million years of, yeah, exactly. of evolution, all right? Yeah. Although uh, in certain spots there's a little uh, little pockets of what they call the Temple Butte Formation. Okay. Uh, so that's supposed to be Devonian, but uh, but uh, the problem also is that if you go up to the North Kaibab Trail up towards the, on the other side of the canyon, uh, you can, uh, and the, they've documented where you have inner fingering, inner bedding. This is what I love. Two, two different uh, uh, layers of, uh, of rock. And so you have uh, uh, Mississippian, Cambrian, Mississippian, Cameron uh, going up like that and it doesn't work. See that makes, but that makes sense. I don't know whether that relates to what you were talking about earlier about sloshing back and forth. Right. The fact that different animal life is what we've talked about earlier determines what they consider the fossil bed to be, and the animals could have been sloshed back and forth with yeah. flood flood water actions. That, does that is that kind of and, and the index fossils well, are only that little tiny small percentage, small percentage yeah. About yeah, that uh, are you know you have dinosaurs which. Uh, are they use as index fossils. Remember that no matter where it's found, 
Uh, you're going to be called that later, yeah. Because I used to be confused about this when I a lot for for many years. I, I was assuming that different sedimentary rock that was considered like like Devonian and or Silurian or Ordovician or Jurassic Cretaceous, you know, um, Triassic. I always thought that they were made up of different rocks, mm -hmm. and they aren't. They could be. All this, they can be the same. They could be limestone, they could be sandstone. sandstone and it depends on what's found in them, is what determines what they consider the age of the rock. And that's the thing that people people don't really understand. And then most of that is de dealt with the 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 one or the um, the uh, the clams and, and fish basically, mm -hmm. which is which is ninety, well, almost ninety nine percent of the fossil record. That's why when you see a T Rex skeleton or a head or so, that's sort of, they're very valuable because they're very unusual, believe it or not. You know, you think that's what they're finding all these, all, and there's lots of them they found, but comparatively speaking, relatively rel relatively little. But I like the unconformities because Doug, there are things that I, I love the inner bedding, yeah. one layer. In, and that makes no sense from an evolutionary time frame. Well, I also well we had an evolutionist to uh, give an explanation for that. They always have one. Yeah, it has, uh, they said, well, it's a karst, it's a cave. The, the, oh, okay. So they got filled in from the top. So, but now, uh, how do they explain the ones? That, this is maybe not here, but so the other ones I love, not only the inner bedding, which I love, but I also like the wavy ones. They're really, they're like oh, that, that's like what you find in the, the Empire Mountains, you know. Yeah, I mean, and you you've got stuff that looks like it was liquid at one time, right? And now it's it's like this. It's not just straight like like you, you know, like you expect. And most of the time would be now below the Moab, you have the Bright Angel Shale and the Tapit Sandstone, and then we have what's called the Great, Great Unconformity. Unconformity. Uh, and, okay. and there's uh, these, uh, uh, all these igneous rocks down there. It's the Dox Formation, the Shinuwa Sandstone, the Hecatai Shale, the Diabase, there's the Vishnu Schist. Now uh, the Vishnu Schist is uh, what the, uh, my daughter, when she went down the bottom of the canyon, got pictures of it. And it's vertical strata. Yeah. A little weird. And then the Zoroaster granite, the Brahma schist, the Rama schist, the, these are all the igneous and metamorphic rocks, and they're all jumbled up. And you wonder how much of Buddhists or Hindus come, come through. Well, a lot, of, a, lot of these, uh, <laughs> a lot of these formations down there were named for Greek, uh, I mean for various uh, Hindu gods. Because all this is, yeah, Vishnu is, or Zoroaster, that's... That's that's different, but that's that's Persian. Now these are all Precambrian, and you yeah. see uh, if you get the brochure from the uh, Grand Canyon, you see this vast portion of it. And more than half is Precambrian. Oh, okay. And and so it's uh, kind of amazing to me that they uh, take a look at that and think, uh, well, this is all uh, all before time ever. <laughs> came about, you know. Before any animals around the earth, right. or basically, they, 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 they think they might have found a few worms. Well, what they're really found the, the, yeah. there is uh, jumbled up uh, basement uh, creation rocks. Yeah, yep. And so that's really what you and have. Those are usually, aren't those usually granites or basalts, aren't they? That's they? what they are, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I want to go back to that funnel that's at, the, right. at Lee's Ferry. At the top here, up here. At the top here, there, okay. uh, which... Um, uh, if you have to want to understand that, is that you're actually going up uh, when you uh, uh, cross that bridge at Marble Canyon, uh, uh, right up as you go to the page, you have to go up a 3,000 foot cliff. And so behind that is uh, the Glen Canyon Dam and, uh, and the, uh, all the uh, uh, parts of the Colorado River that go before that. Rainbow Bridge is up there. Okay. Uh, and uh, if you go many more miles back in there, you get Monument Valley, you get uh, Archers National Park, you get uh, Colorado National Monument, and go all the way back to the Rockies in Colorado. And so uh, I'm, I'm saying that uh, as uh, you know, the continents collided during the flood, you, you had the uplifting of of the Rocky Mountains and uh, and part of that was the, when all this water started to move off because the, oh, the yeah. continents were starting to rise. Well, yeah, it says in the Psalms the mountains rose up, the, the valley sank, sank down. As in the Psalms was one is that one hundred four or one ten? I get them which one. But anyway, there's one, of, and it's kind of like when you. 
you talk about the cottons are bump, 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 and against each other like right. this, and then they come bulk buckling up, and it's right. going down. Something, you know, and there's and that's is that some of that with that with a, with a subduction where plates are going under stuff. Right. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. All right. This was a part of the uh, creation of theory called catastrophic plate con Ca tectonics, tectonics, where the actually you have the original continents being sucked underneath. And then you have all the deposition from the f flood waters uh, going back and forth. You see all these cross bedding. You see that especially at Zion National Park, you, where yeah. you have cross bedding where you have all these different successive layers going this way. Then it's sheared off completely. Yep. You have more layers going another way, sheared off again. More layers, more layers, more layers, and sheared off. And so you have this sloshing back and forth, and each of these uh, sloshes have this uh, deposition. And if you ever get one of these little uh, uh, toy things, with the, where you can turn it upside down and it has all this uh, the like sediment, the sand, and the sand, 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 and the water. Oh yeah, I love those things. Yeah, and, and you can watch how the, that sediment actually roils around and deposits all these finely mm -hmm. embedded layers. Well, then you give them exactly uh, a good picture of how you know the sediments deposited during. And you the think flood. about in terms of continental and yeah. and, and uh, we worldwide. Uh, uh, worldwide deposition and worldwide flood water going back and forth. Well, even in, in, in the Bible itself, the waters go back and forth to and fro over the earth, mm -hmm. which gives you the idea there's a movement there. Right. Even, even, even it's not, it, you know, it's not really explicit, but it's pretty, it, when mm -hmm. you look at it, you're like, wow, that, that's saying the waters are going back and forth over the earth. You know? I've always said that, uh, you know, after going to Monument Valley, that spot in the whole uh, area is a bigger problem for evolutionists to solve even in the Grand Canyon because it's a great uh, it's the more than uh, the Grand Canyon on a bigger scale it's just uh, this flat land you got these ho uh, mountains these buttes sticking up mm -hmm. that uh, are left from uh, from the uh, Cedar Mesa that's around it and then the behind that is the Valley of the Gods uh, and that that place, place. yeah yeah uh, and the Valley of the of the Gods are, is just kind of a, and uh, if you go north up to uh, where uh, Natural Bridges National Monument is, uh, that's another interesting canyon where uh, it was carved out underneath of a, with a river, and this is just and he, yeah. the last vestiges of the floodwaters doing doing its work. Yeah, we like that place because the second one that. The was Kachina with uh, under the was it Kachina Bridge. Kachina yeah. Bridge, as you find petroglyphs, Indian rock uh, drawings of of, uh, of dinosaurs, dinosaurs, of dinosaurs. Yeah, and they're very. It's very explicit. You you can't mistake them, and you go, "Wow, this is pretty cool." In the bridge room, Doug, we were, we were looking around for them that one year, and then Liz found them. Yeah. Because they were on the opposite side of where we were looking, and they're about ten feet, ten twelve feet up in the air. They're kind of this little. And they're little not thing. the only. Uh, Cool petroglyphs that are around. Oh, there's yeah. a lot of really, really neat ones there. Yeah, but but those are the ones we were looking for specifically. So anyway, so, so go ahead, continue now. Go ahead. Well, uh, you talk about this whole area is kind of a, a desert, you know, in terms of its uh, the climate, and uh, but uh, this wasn't always the way it was in the past. You know, you had uh, had to have had a lot of uh, of this uh, uh, geologic work done in a relatively short time. And even some of the areas, Doug, I mean, I don't know, not, maybe not in this area, I'm trying my brain. He's much better at getting all the specific, I'm, I'm directionally challenged, but the point of it is, I just love the one spot we got with Mexican hat and all that area, yeah. where it just, it, you could almost look like the fact this must have been under sea at one point. It looked like it was just this barren desert and it's like a bowl. It's like a whole thing around mm -hmm. the cliffs all around the side. And you can, we're driving on this trail. I remember driving down that. And you're going, I can imagine the whole thing covered in water at one point. Mm -hmm. Just like I can imagine the Colorado River being cutting through that, cutting through the canyon like that. That I, My brain just, 
I can see the floodwaters runoff and all that stuff. Well, the, the reason <laughs> the, the, the Colorado River didn't cut the canyon. No, it didn't cut the, the canyon. The, 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 the Colorado was there because of the canyon. Because of the canyon, yeah. That's, that's probably a better way to put it, yeah. Cause, sorry about that. But, yeah, it's a remnant, if you will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so... And that's that's true for the little Colorado River, which I find amazing that uh, it's, it's deep at the at point where it empties into the canyon, but it's shallow at the other end, and and yeah. and it's just a really a wash for the most part. There's really not much in, the, in terms of water. So uh, to uh, and so the, the short of it is that. Uh, uh, the flood really makes for a much better explanation for what we see in the geology. Now, <clears throat> just like evolutionists, we can't, uh, we all, all we can do is take what we find in the present. We can't uh, rewind the clock and go back and go back and, and, uh, and go back and observe how it happens. And so there is no empirical science that is uh, here. And, you know, if you know what forensic science is, you take what you find as clues in the present, and uh, you can maybe deduce a little bit of what you can happened extrapolate by what happened in the past. And but yeah. if you if you ever watch the Crime Channel, you find all these cold cases <laughs> of, yeah. of, of crimes that aren't solved because uh, the evidence just uh, isn't conclusive enough to for us to make a, a good judgment as to what has happened. The thing that we do have, though, Doug, and we've said this many, many times, we have a written record of what did happen. Right. And we can make extrapolations, deductions, theories that seem to be reasonable based on things in the present. For instance, how does water act in certain forms? How does right. sediment act? Uh, and we've seen things, we've talked about the Mount St. Helens phenomenon, for instance, mm -hmm. and, and the Scadlands, mm -hmm. where it indicates that a large amounts of water would indicate would 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 could create and would create many things that like the pre, like we see in the present. For instance, the the the, the Spirit Lake and that runoff there that created that canyon, one forty the size of Grand Canyon in a few in a couple of days. Mm -hmm. Okay, the same kind of idea. So yeah, know. I I remember reading about one uh, the fellow who was a creationist, but he he stumbled over the, all the. Uh, uh, petrified forests in the yeah. stone. Numbers? And, uh, numbers. And yep. he, he uh, ended up uh, uh, punting because of that. And but, so the, but the uh, explanation that Stephen Austin talks about of how he went into Spirit Lake, saw how all these uh, different uh, logs were dropping down into the bottom and producing these uh, like petrified And many of them would go, they would go, they, they not vertical, vertical. They yeah. get covered, and what he also noticed was the roots, a lot of them were sheared yeah. off, which was what we exactly. see in, in the petrified specimen ridge and places like that, that's what we see. So, and I saw yeah. that at Crater Lake, there's a, yeah. uh, a little uh, log that's close around the Crater Lake, oh, really? uh, that's called <laughs> Old Man of the Lake. <laughs> well, we hope you enjoyed our little t grand tour of the Grand Staircase, and uh, we hope you enjoy, uh, enjoyed that, and we'll see you next time on Revolution Against Evolution. Bye now.